Welcome to MLT online classes and today's subject is hematology and we are going to discuss about bleeding disorders. So before discussing about bleeding disorders, can anyone say what are bleeding disorders? These are a group of diseases in which results in excessive bleeding. So whenever there is a bleeding, my body will start, whenever I have a blood cut, my body will start preventing that blood, right? It will stop that bleed, blood. If it is not stopping that bleeding, I will die due to loss of blood. So how my body preventing bleeding is a the mechanism of prevention of bleeding is called as hemostasis before understanding bleeding disorders you need to know how you need to know the mechanism of how the body preventing bleeding okay that mechanism is called as hemostasis hemo stands for blood whereas stasis means to arrest so arrest of blood is called as hemostasis so how this hemostasis happens in our body? Before that, let me tell you a story. So imagine I have a blood cut here. So my blood vessel has been damaged. Immediately after blood vessel damage, what happens to me? I will start bleeding, right? So if my mother sees this bleeding, immediately what she will do? Yo, once she got uh, damaged and she will apply some turmeric powder, right? So by applying some turmeric powder, my bleeding will stop temporarily but it is not a permanent solution if i remove that powder once again i will start bleeding right so just like this immediately after blood vessel cut my body my blood has something called platelets all the platelets will come to the site of bleeding and they will prevent bleeding okay in the site of injury and they will prevent bleeding temporarily but just like a turmeric powder if i remove this uh, clot it will start once again bleeding right so that is why in reality also whenever we will we will have a bleeding and we will keep our finger for uh, two to three minutes after three minutes what happens students the bleeding will stop right then we will think okay the bleeding has been stopped and you will start dancing and you will once again tap un uh, unknowingly and you will bleed once again that means that is just a temporary stoppage of bleeding but not a permanent in order to in order to have a permanent solution, I need a very strong material. Strong material like cement or like MCL or like bandage. And that strong material, the body also need. Platelets is only temporary prevention of bleeding. But we need something very strong material like fevicol or feviquic. And that material is fibrin. So if we keep fibrin in this area fibrin will be so strong it will prevent it will stop permanent bleeding so it is a permanent solution to the bleeding so how to prepare this fibrin this fibrin present in our body as fibrinogen we need to activate we need to convert fibrinogen to fibrin so how this fibrinogen will be converted to fibrin for that first we have platelets these are platelets Platelets will start converting fibrinogen into fibrin. For that, platelets need some factors. Now you are getting the story right. What are the factors called as? They are clotting factors. So clotting factors will, platelets will use clotting factors to make fibrin, which will give permanent solution to stoppage, stoppage of bleeding. So in order, to, in order to stop bleeding, we need two mechanisms. One is we need platelets and also we need clotting factors to prevent bleeding. So this is what hemostasis works. So let me show you the mechanism of hemostasis. Now you understood, right? Platelets plays a crucial role in bleeding as well as clotting factors also plays a crucial role in bleeding. So let me say diagrammatically of hemostasis. Now I'm going to discuss about mechanism of hemostasis. Okay, so mechanism of hemostasis consists of three stages totally. Vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction, platelet activation, platelet activation, and coagulation of blood, formation of prothrombin activator. For that means coagulation of blood. Okay, let me write formation of prothrombin activator which ultimately results in formation of fibrin fibrin threads 
that results in clotting. Okay, I need space, so I'm not going to write all these things. Vasoconstriction, platelet activation, and formation of prothrombin activator. By these three mechanisms, our body will prevent bleeding. Before that, let me say one one more thing. What is vasoconstriction? See, students, whenever I have a blood clot, immediately these blood vessels will become small. Their size of the the diameter of the blood vessel will shrink. The diameter from this size it will shrink to the size of this. Uh, tip okay by that the rate of flow of blood to the site of injury will be reduced so immediately after blood clot it will go to vasoconstriction that means constriction of blood vessels followed by platelet activation and these platelets will start aggregating in the site of bleeding and they will prevent bleeding temporarily then they will start synthesizing fibrin by clotting factors and ultimately our bleed blood will be clotted so let me show you here. So imagine this is a blood vessel and this blood vessel has been damaged. So here blood vessel has been damaged. So damaged blood vessel what will happen now my I started bleeding immediately after okay blood vessels made up of endothelial cells. So blood vessel is made up of endothelial cells. So after damage to the blood vessel collagen fibers will get exposed collagen fibers will get exposed. On these collagen fibers, these endothelial cells will secrete a factor, a substance called von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor. And what does this factor will do? It will start binding on the surface of exposed collagen fibers. So von Willebrand factor binded to the collagen fibers. After this, as I already stated, Platelets present in the blood, right? All these platelets will come and they will start binding to the von Willebrand factor. Now I want to tell one more thing. What is the role of platelets? Platelets will do three important functions in bleeding. Okay? Three important functions. First one is adhesion. Adhesion. Second one is aggregation. And third one is agglutination agglutination triple a okay adhesion also called as binding aggregation means many platelets will get aggregated and agglutination means clotting clotting so okay platelets came and they will start binding on to the one willibrand factor keep in mind students why i'm saying all these things because there are some conditions in which those people won't have one willibrand factor if they don't have one willibrand factor platelets can't bind to one willibrand factor okay so platelets will bind to the von Willebrand factor by a glycoprotein. You know platelets, imagine platelets have a hands and they need by with the help of hand they will bind to the von Willebrand factor. Okay. So this hand like structure of the platelet is called as glycoprotein GP glycoprotein 1BA. Glycoprotein 1BA. Okay, with the help of glycoprotein 1BA, platelets will adhere to the von Willebrand factor. After this, these platelets will get activated and they will secrete two important substances. Those substances are ADP, ADP adenosine diphosphate and thrombaxin A2. Thrombaxin A2. So what is the role of ADP and thrombaxin A2? ADP and thrombaxin A2 are the cell cytokine signaling messengers so once these signals released these chemicals released into the blood they will call all other platelets to the site of injury so it is like an alarm signal to all platelets immediately after releasing these two chemicals all the platelets will start binding to the site of injury they will come here and they will start aggregation and this this is the second function of platelets they will aggregate now these aggregated platelets attach each other so two platelets should attach each other right so they will attach each other by a protein by a glycoprotein called 2b3a with the help of glycoprotein 2b3a platelets will aggregate let me say one thing students deficiency of 1ba results in lack of adhesion of platelets which results in increased bleeding time so we need this receptor and the second receptor we need is GP1B2B3A. 2B3A is responsible for the aggregation of platelets.
keep in mind deficiency of 1BA results in a disease called bleeding disorder called Bernard Solier syndrome. Bernard Solier syndrome. Bernard Solier syndrome is a platelet function disorder in which platelets don't have glycoprotein 1BA. Absence of 1BA results in loss of attachment of platelets to the one equilibrium factor that results in increased bleeding time. And deficiency of GP2B3A results in a disorder called Gaussman's Gaussman's thrombosthenia thrombosthenia. So these two are platelet disorder diseases, bleeding disorders. Okay, then platelets aggregated here and they will form a temporary plug, and this temporary plug will prevent bleeding temporarily. And this plug is called as primary platelet plug. Primary platelet plug. Now, after this, platelets will start agglutination. How? They will utilize all the clotting factors and they will convert fibrinogen into fibrin. And this fibrin will ultimately clot the blood. Okay? So, conversion of fibrinogen needs an activator. That activator is called as prothrombin activator prothrombin activator so prothrombin will in turn convert fibrinogen to fibrin so that is why we need, platelets will synthesize this prothrombin activator if platelets synthesize prothrombin activator prothrombin activator in turn converts fibrinogen to fibrin and the blood will clot and last and final mechanism which i haven't discussed in the previous lecture is the clots okay blood has been clotted that means bleeding has been prevented right now, these clots will agglutinate inside the blood vessels. If those clots are present inside the blood vessels, we have smallest blood vessels in the heart, coronary blood vessels. If those blood vessels blocked by these clots means what happens? We will get a ischemic heart disease. So, we need to remove these clots also. After clotting of blood, we need to remove these clots, right? So, our body has one more mechanism to destroy the blood clots after healing okay and that mechanism is called as fibrinolysis fibrinolytic mechanism if this mechanism not present means we will die due to blockage of blood vessels so our body also has something called fibrinolytic mechanism so this is the overview of hemostasis in hemostasis first one is vasoconstriction followed by platelet activation then formation of prothrombin activator that in turn clots the blood now keep in mind students vasoconstriction is mediated by a hormone which is released by the platelets called serotonin so activated platelets will secrete serotonin that serotonin will decrease the size of blood vessel after that platelets will start secreting adenosine and thrombin A2 in the presence of adenosine and thrombin A2 many platelets will start aggregating at the site of uh, uh, injury with the help of receptor 2B3A then they will form a primary platelet plug then they will start synthesizing prothrombin activator prothrombin activator in turn converts fibrinogen to fibrin and it will form clots after that these clots will be removed by a mechanism called fibrinolytic mechanism so I will draw one table just write the table everyone um, just draw this diagram okay hmm. Write the table students. Already I shared this material with you. You can go through the material after watching this lecture. So you will get one idea. So what happened in the hemostasis? First, injury to the blood vessel, right? Injury to the blood vessel. So injury to the blood vessel, then what happens? Exposure of collagen. Exposure of collagen. So collagen has been exposed then what happens platelets will start adhering to the collagen adherence of platelets to the collagen so this is mediated by a hormone what is that secreted by the endothelial cells of the blood vessels one willebrand factor in the presence of one willebrand factor platelets will adhere to the collagen 
then platelets will get activated activation of platelets so the, once activated they will start secreting three important they will do three important functions one is secretion of serotonin so what happens when the serotonin is secreted it results in vasoconstriction which is the first mechanism of hemostasis then platelets also secretes adp and thromboxane a2 so release of thromboxane a2 and adp results in aggregation of platelets aggregation of platelets while the platelets are aggregating there is one more factor called platelet activating factor which will further increases the aggregation of platelets okay platelet activation factor platelet paf platelet activation factor will in turn increases the rate of aggregation of platelets then they will form platelet plug platelet plug which is called as platelet plug formation which is also called primary platelet plug formation then platelets will can for form prothrombin activator so prothrombin activator what it will do it will convert fibrinogen to fibrin then it will clot the blood so this is the overview of hemostasis kindly go through the material to understand the topic okay thank you so much have a good day students